What is up guys? I do hope you are well. My name is Mark and today we're covering some r slash relationships. If you'd like to skip the initial waffle, timestamps are in the description and along the timeline below. But if you are new here, please consider hitting that like, that subscribe and maybe that notification bell too. I hope you're having a great day or even if you're just starting your day, I hope it turns out to be a good one. And with that being said, let's just crack straight on with today's stories. Much love guys. Now our first story comes from a throwaway account. Found out I have a twin back home that I never knew about because my parents didn't want to adopt a baby with a disability. I was adopted from India when I was 6 months old. I'm now 28. Since my parents are white I obviously knew I was adopted from a young age. The only thing I was told was that my bio parents were very poor so they put me in an orphanage and both moved away to find work. My parents were also from two different faiths and they had me out of wedlock so I was rejected by both sides of their family. I thought I knew the full story until recently. My parents have a box of my things when they first adopted me like clothes I was wearing, my toys, my papers etc in a box somewhere in their closet. When I found out I was pregnant last month I wanted those things to give to my daughter. My parents had no problem giving me the box with all the things in it. When I took the box back home to look at it, I was looking over all the pages. Inside the box there's lots of papers in Marathi with an English text version as well. There's about 30 pages in there. My friend is Indian but speaks Hindi primarily but knows a bit of Marathi. She told me that the written texts are similar so one day when she was over we decided to go over the papers for fun. To my disappointment she couldn't understand a lick of what the Marathi papers said but she noticed her name, Nakusha and told me she recognized that as meaning unwanted daughter. After looking over the papers for a while, she told me she noticed another word, sister, being mentioned on some of the papers. I was so thrown off. I asked her to clarify, but she didn't really know much else because she's not that fluent and thought she was making a mistake and she could take a picture and ask her dad who was fluent what it means exactly and what they're referring to. The English version said nothing about a sister and it was supposed to be a direct translation. When my friend left I called my mum and told her that the funniest thing just happened. My friend was badly trying to translate the Marathi papers and noticed the word sister but we think it's just a mistake. My mum chuckled nervously and said it must be a mistake and changed the conversation. In hindsight it was clear as day but at the time I didn't think twice of it. My friend texted me a few days ago saying her dad looked at the pictures and said the Marathi papers said that I was born a twin but my twin was born with a missing lower leg and an arm and is basically inadoptable. My twin was sent to a special adoption centre and that all the papers said about that. I was shocked. A twin? I was led to believe I was the only child. I have a twin sister out there somewhere in India. Is she alive? Is she well? Does she know about me? Ever since I found out I have my whole twin out there, I feel like part of me is missing. I have someone with my exact DNA out there. My husband is as shocked as me. He was there when I went over to my parents' house to confront them. At first they denied it and said my friend's dad mistranslated it, but after some badgering and crying, they finally admitted to it. My dad said they really wanted me and they couldn't afford to raise a disabled child and they didn't want to leave without me. They tried to say they loved me so much and were so set on adopting me and the agency only told them about my sister once they already bonded with me and my sister was better off back in India because she would be too big a burden. I feel so lost and confused and I don't know what to do. I'm pregnant and my hormones are crazy. I haven't spoken to my parents since my brother told me they haven't stopped crying. What should I do? Wow, I can't imagine how OP is feeling right now, especially being pregnant themselves, knowing they've got a twin sister somewhere in the world, potentially if they're okay, of course. I can't imagine what is going through their head right now. It's just so crazy. But what could you do in that situation? I mean, could you go to India and potentially look for them? And even if you do, there's lots of dangers involved with that, I imagine. And I'm not saying India is a dangerous place or anything like that, but just going to a random country looking for your twin and things, I can imagine lots of people would be willing to take advantage of that. We're going to head to the comments for this one though, because I imagine there's going to be some good information there. So DSA user says, Indian American female here. I don't know what happened in your sister's situation, but I know many conservative Indians have bad superstitions about kids with disabilities. I would suggest you work with a therapist, ideally one with familiarity with international adoptions and or Indian culture to help you work through this and then decide if you want to find her. 
please be aware in India many people view those from the West as rich so if you show up to India some people or organizations may expect you to pay for all past and future expenses for your sister and Weasley J says that's super intense I cannot even imagine how you are feeling this is like a book or something it's kind of sad that they kept it from you but it's understandable that they couldn't take on raising two kids and one with a disability I'm trying to envision how to tell a child they have a twin back home and they can't live together or see each other. At what age do you let them know the whole story? There's probably no right answer, so they went for what they thought was right for themselves. And OP replied to the saying, I understand it's hard raising a kid with a disability. My husband's brother has Down syndrome and he's told of their struggles as a family. I just feel so deceived and hurt that I have a twin and never knew. I'm almost 30. I feel like my life is a lie almost. I always had identified problems, but this adds something new because there's someone that was along for this journey that I had no clue about. I can't stop thinking about my sister. And Raleen says, let's be real, adoption is expensive and they may not even have been able to get two babies. There may have been other bureaucratic issues with adopting an infant labeled unadoptable. They could have just taken you or realistically, most likely other outcome, they could have left you and adopted a different baby that didn't have a twin. At which point, because your sister was labelled unadoptable, you'd have probably been adopted without her by a different family and grown up with a whole different life, if you got adopted at all. This revelation is intense and it's understandable that you would have complicated feelings about it, but maybe talking about it would help. To find out the exact circumstances, to maybe find your sister. To understand why they did what they did, even if you ultimately don't forgive them. And Gold Dusted says, I'm so sorry, they should have told you, but it's not solely your parents' fault. I'm half Indian and disability, even health conditions, even something like height, is viewed with great suspicion by some Indians. My Indian cousins are talked about like cattle. All my aunts and uncles bitching about how a certain niece is too dark, another is too short, all rejoicing in their in-laws' difficulties and marrying off their daughters. I'm not having an arranged marriage, so in my case, the bitching is about how white girls have no morals. One cousin with a chronic illness was thought to be unmarriageable, but she managed to get married. Her husband has a learning disability, so his family were in the same boat. I obviously think this is fucking stupid and inhumane, as do many of the younger generation of Indians in my family, but they can't break free of that without abandoning the whole culture, and unfortunately it's not like white people are holding their arms out in acceptance of anyone who isn't them. So your twin was already marked and judged by the adoption agency in India. They wanted you off their hands. They didn't care about any humane consideration of keeping you with your twin. They exploited a Western couple who were, I imagine, desperate for a baby. They probably viewed your parents as gullible schmucks. It's entirely possible that your parents' story is true. It's highly unlikely that your point of view prevails in India at all. My dad told me that in his village in India, if an intersex child is born, there is a community of intersex people who live as outcasts and come and demand the child. They harass any parents who want to keep an intersex child, saying it belongs to their community and it's their right. They bully the parents until they give in, and they usually do give in, because they know deep down that the child won't be accepted in mainstream community. This is heartbreaking and a similar attitude probably contributed to why people were happy to let you go without your sister. She was deemed unadoptable after all. They couldn't imagine that any couple would exist who'd take both. Bear in mind that it's super hard caring for twins, even when both are able-bodied. As others have said, if you go there, you'll be expected to pay over the odds for access to your sister. My dad was always having to send money that my mum thought should go to us, or even just himself, to distant relatives in India. Just used to joke they had to go over there if someone dropped a napkin to pick it up. I can't imagine how you're feeling, but trying to cause a scene may hurt your sister. If you could get over to the US with you, that's one thing, but I'm sure whoever's looking after her won't let that happen without milking her for all they perceive she is worth to you. They will want you to pay up like they made your parents pay up. Your parents love you and right now they are hurting. You have never met your sister. You've probably grown up in a Western world with righteous ideas about her deserving help that would probably seem utterly bizarre to her and just cause her suffering. You're putting a blood relation you've never met over your parents who raised you for nearly three decades when, don't forget, you were unwanted back home as well and the adoption services were probably joyous to get a white couple whom they could rip off. That's got to hurt. 
They shouldn't have lied, but you're old enough now to give them some empathy. Don't direct all your empathy to a hypothetical image of a hypothetical twin sister. You have family right here who could really use your forgiveness for their mistake, because it doesn't sound like cruelty, but an error of judgment. Your pain is valid, but hurting your parents won't help. Sometimes you've got to accept that they're human too and flawed. I try to talk to my mum about racism and all she does is that she would never have mixed race children if she knew one would be obsessed with racism. Obviously, this is a totally unhelpful response. She doesn't understand and punishing her for it would achieve nothing. Sometimes you need to just let it go and focus on your own closure, not punishing someone for not doing what you would have done. Hope this helps and you read it as being in deep sympathy with you. Your parents lie to you and it's completely understandable for you to take some time, but it's not clear cut as lying is bad. They made an error of judgment when they were being taken advantage of. If they have been loving parents, then don't let that overshadow it. They could have probably spent their lives second guessing their decision and fearing they would lose their child because of it and such fears contributed to their continued error of judgment. You have no idea what you'd have done in their shoes. Don't fulfill their fears out of spite or misplaced loyalty to a sister you cannot help or whose life you would overturn. You have no idea if she'd want to see her able-bodied, westernized sister. She'd be in the care of money grubbers who will ensure she feels resentment towards you. You can't do anything for her, but you can do something for your parents. Whew, that was a long comment and I wasn't expecting that. As I was reading more and more, I was going, wow. But there's some really, really good points there and really well thought out in my opinion. And I know India is just a completely different culture, you know, but it must be so incredibly hard for OP going through their head day in and out, knowing there's a sister out there somewhere. I, if I was in there, that person's shoes and I knew my brother was out there somewhere, I feel like I'd want to find them. But I know, as that last comment just said, it's just not that easy. But what would you do in this situation if you was placed into it? How would you deal with it? Let us know in the comments below. And our next story is from a throwaway account. I 33 female snooped and saw that my husband 36 male had been getting into red pill stuff since we had our daughter and it's really worrying me. I'm putting here because I really don't know what to do. I've been married to my husband for 10 years. We've had a four year old daughter and an eight year old son together. We're both teachers, but have been mostly working from home since fall due to everything. He's also the assistant band director, so he has to go in five days a week for two hours. We had a very good relationship free from many troubles and we've been so happy together. Recently, I've noticed that he's been making comments that seem on some level sexist. Not overtly sexist, but enough that thinking on it could tell it was rooted in sexism. He'd make comments about how some women were mutual friends, were married to beaters. As, and at one point he said, beta bucks or bucks I don't know and I had no idea what he was talking about at the time and didn't call him out on it. This week he made a comment that indirectly said that he was disappointed that I wasn't a virgin when we got together. This made me feel like complete shit. I used to struggle with feeling bad that I'd slept with people that didn't deserve me before I met my husband and this brought those feelings back. At this point I realized something was up. I know I shouldn't have done this, but I looked through his phone and laptop and I saw he'd been visited MGTOW and Red Pill forums. He even had a Reddit account that was four months younger than our daughter. I'm really at a loss. I don't know what is pushing him in this direction and I don't know what I could do to stop him. I'm especially worried that he might start saying things like this around our kids and turn our son into a misogynist and make our daughter think this is how women are supposed to act. I really need any form of help. I had to first look up red pill behavior. I didn't, I've never heard of that before. God, I must be under a rock or something. If this is, this is language that's going around at the minute. I didn't have a clue, but yeah, it is really concerning behavior, you know, and the kind of language used in this post, I have certainly seen it in certain subreddits. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think the only way for us is to tackle this head on and say, look, the language you're using is totally not appropriate. What is causing you to use this? Just call them out on it, you know? I think that usually causes the best the best conversation, obviously without being too aggressive with it or anything like that, but something's obviously triggered this. Let's have a look at some of the comments to see what they say. 
Pink Witch says, Sometimes when people say foolish things to you, a strategy I employ is, I haven't heard of that, what do you mean? Because then that person can't rely on their buzzwords anymore and have to unpack their prejudices right there. God, I, drug, I always struggle saying that word. Usually they either realize it's messed up and quit or get frustrated and quit. You should absolutely talk to your husband and try calling out the stuff he says, if only to acknowledge it's something new to you and not part of the marriage you'd like to stay in. Skavola says, you guys have to talk. Obviously, no, not us, if he has the capability to outgrow this. It's worrying as hell that someone with a family and real future is in any way buying into the MGTOW garbage fire. Maybe he needs to understand what he's putting at risk. The bottom line, though, is that you don't deserve to have this creeping into your marriage and him making you feel bad because 4chan told him so. <laughs> Passionate Pumpkin says, referring to some men as betas, laminating about you not being a virgin over 10 years later, this is already overtly sexist, not subtly. Nate612 says, beta bucks or bucks, I don't know. The saying is, alpha fucks, beta bucks. The intended meaning is that women fuck the alpha guy and marry the beta who makes good money. I didn't know that. I thought they was talk I thought it was like she made a mistake and it was cucks or something like that. I've heard of that one before. I'm a need a new name says, very troubling. Anyone who uses the term beta bucks has very likely already gone to crazy town as is involved with incel message boards and media. I would have a frank and open discussion with him about it and voice your concerns. Now I'm gonna turn this one to you guys. What would you do in this situation if your other half started talking in this sort of manner? How would you deal with it? Let us know in the comments below. And our next story comes from Marenko12. My 41 female boyfriend, 33 male, gave me an STD, lied about it and came clean 11 months later and blamed the STD on me and that I seduced him. My therapist said it happens a lot and isn't a big deal. That response seems messed up, is it? Here are the basics. I met my boyfriend of two years online. It was my first online date. Three weeks after meeting, we slept together. The condom didn't fit, etc. since it was a natural one, so he didn't use it. He didn't come in me, but there was contact. Afterwards, I asked him about his sexual history, and he said the last woman he had been with was his wife of seven years, which was my understanding beforehand, and why I felt safe having sex. Two days later, it accidentally came up that he had slept with one woman after his wife that he met online, that they slept together twice, and that he had used a condom. I asked why he didn't tell me that, and he said he didn't want to seem easy or like he sleeps around, and cared what I thought. I asked him about four times in the following year, did you definitely use a condom, since I had high risk cancerous HPV once, about 15 years earlier which cleared, and didn't want to get it again. He said yes, I didn't go to get any exams and we had a monogamous relationship without condoms and with BCP. I got my annual exam about 8 months later and had high risk HPV. He started crying and hyperventilating, saying he was crying because he was so sad this was happening. It turns out he was crying because he had lied and hurt me. The doctor said, watch your stress and it will hopefully go away. He didn't respect this and would scream at me often after this, as, his ang as he has anger issues. I asked him if he was honest about using protection prior to meeting me, and he said yes. About two months later, he came clean and said he had unprotected sex three weeks prior to meeting me and had lied about it for the first 11 months of our relationship. I jaw dropped. I said he put my health at risk, lied to me about it while saying he loved me and did nothing health or stress-wise to help my body recover. We broke up for a short while and he begged to get back together and said he'd make changes, which he made, ate better, smoked less pot and then recanted because he said he resented them. A month later, it came up in a fight and he blamed the STD on me. He incorrectly recalled the situation and said I seduced him and he had to lie because he wanted to F me and he was thinking with his dick. He didn't remember that he lied to me after we slept together, not before, and he said it was my fault that I got the STD since I put him in that position. So I like gave it to myself. I talked to my therapist and she somewhat dismissed this as people often do lie about their past so they can get on with their new partner and so their new partner will stay with them. She acted like this is somewhat okay and understandable. Is this common for a guy and okay to do? Should I stay with him or is this an unrecoverable action? Can I have a good 40 years with him after this? Usually little lies at the start of relationships. I could probably forgive, you know, if you're embarrassed about something like that. But this is an STD. He put your health at risk. 
That is unforgivable in my opinion. If he's willing to lie about that something so early, what else is he willing to lie about? And I'm very, very curious, just because I'm nosy, to know what he got divorced for in the first place. You know, you mentioned he has anger issues and stuff like that. Was it anything related to that? Because it just, that concerns me straight away. But then again, I am reaching right here. I don't know what, why he got divorced in the first place. But let's break it down. So this guy is, from some of the comments I've seen as well, is a lazy dude. <laughs> He's giving you an STD. And he's emotionally abusive by shouting at you in that way because he has anger issues. So I think it says it all right there, right? But Chloe Soap says, uh, so on top of lying, he's literally blaming you for his bad decisions and poor emotional regulation. I have no idea what sort of relationship your therapist is getting into. This seems like a lovely collage of red flags to me. Moggy Man says you need a new boyfriend and a new therapist. Neither of them have your best interests at heart. Honestly, it really is that simple and clear cut in this scenario. Popping T says he gaslit you, endangered your health and does not seem like a very good person. Also, your therapist does not sound very good either and I might look into switching to a different one. People commit armed robbery all the time and doesn't make it okay. If he can lie about having an STD for a year, what else can he lie about? Not a good situation all around. I'm sure it's probably common, but I wouldn't say it's okay at all. If it makes you feel bad, then it's bad. Now, I'm gonna turn this one to you guys. Imagine yourself in this relationship that you just started and then like after a year he lied, he comes out and says, oh yeah, he did have an STD and he's potentially put your health in danger. How would you deal with it? Do you think that's forgivable? Can you recover from that in a relationship? Let us know in the comments below. Once again, guys, thank you for being here today. I hope you have enjoyed today's video. And if you have, you know what to do. Hit that like, subscribe, and maybe that notification bell too. And I hope you have a bloody great day ahead of you, whatever you're doing. And don't forget to let me know what you are doing today whilst you're listening. I love to hear it. Anyway, I shall see you guys in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love.